The concept of boundary layers is essential for understanding the convective heat transfer, especially for fluids flowing along a solid surface where the heat transfer coefficient depends on both fluid properties as well as the surface geometry. Similar to the velocity boundary layer, which is generated due to sharp gradient that exists because of the no-slip condition on the solid surface, a thermal boundary layer is also generated where a temperature gradient is observed. In this lesson, we will learn about these velocity and thermal boundary layers. Let us take an infinitely long flat plate. When the thermal boundary layer is formed near the wall, the fluid temperature varies between the wall temperature Ts and the free stream temperature T infinity at the edge of the boundary layer. And the thermal boundary layer thickness is given by delta T. From Fourier's law of heat conduction, any temperature gradient at the flat plate wall results in a heat transfer between the fluid and the wall. Using the boundary layer approximations, the 2D governing equations of fluid motion are simplified. Based on these approximations, we obtain the following boundary layer equations for steady incompressible laminar flows. It is to be noted that the viscous dissipation term in the energy equation is small compared to the advective terms and therefore can be neglected. A closer look at these equations will tell us that the temperature and velocity fields are coupled. This means they are interdependent and a temperature solution is necessary to solve for the fluid velocity. Having said that, for fluids with constant flow properties, the energy equation is decoupled from the continuity and momentum equations. This allows us to obtain the velocity solution first and then we use the obtained solution to solve for the temperature field in the boundary layer. Let us non-dimensionalize the laminar boundary layer equations. We will use the highlighted length of the flat plate, free stream velocity and free stream temperature as our characteristic scales to normalize the independent and dependent variables. We obtain the following equations in their non-dimensional form. A closer look at these equations will show these non-dimensional numbers Reynolds number, Prandtl number and Brinkman number. The last term of the energy equation is often small compared to the other terms and is neglected. The following boundary conditions are needed to solve these equations. At the walls, we impose a no-slip condition. On the thermal side, we either need the knowledge of the wall temperature or wall flux. At the edge of the boundary layer, both fluid velocity and temperature equal their respective free stream values. Although we will not look at the final solution of these equations in this lesson, it is important to understand the physical meaning behind these conditions. One important observation can be made from the dimensionless numbers. The ratio of the velocity to thermal boundary layer thickness is proportional to the nth power of the fluid Prandtl number. This implies that the velocity boundary layer is much thicker than the thermal boundary layer for high Prandtl number fluids such as liquids. On the other hand, for low Prandtl number fluids such as liquid metals, the thermal layer is thicker than the velocity. For most gases with Prandtl numbers approximately equal to 1, the velocity and thermal thicknesses are nearly equal. These observations are extremely important in modern day CFD when deciding the near wall resolution of the computational meshes. It is crucial to highlight that for most practical turbulent flows, the velocity and thermal boundary layers have nearly same thicknesses. For zero pressure gradients and Prandtl numbers equal to one, it is clear 
from the non-dimensional form of the boundary layer equations that the momentum and energy equations are identical. This is popularly called the Reynolds analogy where the velocity and temperature profiles have identical shapes. Using this analogy, the wall heat flux and skin friction coefficients are related through the following equation. Here, the heat flux is represented in the non-dimensional sense as the Nusselt number. If the fluid velocity field is known, we can use this relationship to estimate the heat transfer provided that two conditions are satisfied, zero pressure gradient and Prandtl number equal to one. This analogy is therefore most applicable for gas flows. This equation is rewritten in terms of the Stanton number. The analogy can be expanded to a wider range of Prandtl numbers by adding a small correction factor. The following chilton colburn analogy is applicable for Prandtl numbers ranging between 0.6 and 60. Let us now turn our attention to the turbulent boundary layers. Unlike the laminar boundary layer flow, the turbulent flow variables have two components, a mean component phi bar and an instantaneous component phi prime. We apply the classic Reynolds averaging technique and obtain the following governing equations for an incompressible fluid with constant properties. The highlighted term in the Y momentum equation is almost always small across the boundary layer compared to the free stream dynamic pressure and can be neglected. There are two extra terms in the momentum and energy equations respectively and these are highlighted here. Both these terms are a result of turbulent mixing and they individually contribute towards the total shear stress as well as the total heat flux. The presence of these turbulent terms result in an enhancement of momentum and thermal transport rate as shown here. Both these terms require additional modeling and we make use of the most common modeling approach, the Bosnisk hypothesis. In this approach, the Reynolds stress is related to the gradients of mean flow velocity using eddy viscosity and gradients of temperature through eddy diffusivity. These relationships are as follows. Here, nu t and alpha t are eddy viscosity and diffusivity respectively. Substituting these back into the energy equation, we obtain the final turbulent boundary layer equation. The determination of eddy viscosity and diffusivity is a part of what is called the science of turbulence modeling and there is, unfortunately, no universal model for all turbulent flow problems. This choice is primarily dependent on flow physics as well as the type of application. Unlike the laminar boundary layer equations, we rely on experiments or modern day CFD to solve the turbulent boundary layers. With this note, let's conclude this lesson.